Hi guys and welcome to another sick show. I'm super pumped to be here as always and I've got my man B. How are you brother? I'm doing awesome today. Yeah. And this week we've got the legendary Rick Salmon guys and you got to find out what Jimi Hendrix, Rick Salmon and a combi bus have got in common. And Rick's going to share his amazing image of the killing machine from Africa and find out how to master outdoor flash photography in seven minutes or less. And one other thing, Rick's got his hands on the smallest Canon DSLR ever, the new one. So find out about that too. Let's get into it guys. Awesome. Awesome. The Six Show. Share, inspire, create.com. Share. Okay, Rick, give us, share something with us about yourself that not many people would know. I can't believe that you kept a straight face because I just shared the story with these guys before. <laughs> but, but here's the story. In 1969, when were you guys born? 71. 77. <laughs> oh, my God. This is why they called me the godfather of photography. I'm one of the oldest guys around. But anyway, in 1969, I was 19, and I went to Woodstock. And oh. I had a little Volkswagen van like this, like Flower Power. Was this popular in Australia, Flower Power and Volkswagen buses? Totally, yeah, oh, man, yeah, yeah. Volkswagens are still popular with the older generation. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There's a guy at work who just loves them. They're so popular still. So anyway, I'm driving my uh, van up to a Woodstock just like that. See, it's good to have props, right? <laughs> I was driving my van. And first of all, before I tell you the story, I would be a gazillionaire if I had a camera. You know, I did. I was just into music then. I'm still into music. I still play every day, guitar and piano. But uh, we were like five rows from Santana and Hendrix. I mean, uh -huh. if I had those pictures, I'd be a gazillionaire. But the story a lot of people don't know is that I was naked dancing in the mud at Woodstock. <laughs> so this is my big claim to fame. Actually, if you do a search, Rick Salmon Woodstock, you won't see that picture. <laughs> we, we've deleted that. Yeah. But you will see a picture of uh, how I looked in 1969. But you know what, my friends? I'm still the same person inside. You know, I still, you know, I think music is creative, photography is creative. Yeah. And I think, you know, although our bodies grow older, I think, you know, if we keep that spirit alive of, uh, you know, doing what we want to do and being fresh and freedom and all that stuff, you know, I think it's, I think that helps keep you young. Totally. And I think, yeah, like we spoke earlier about not taking things too seriously, I think that's uh, very important, Greg. And, and thanks, well, yeah. thanks for that story. And I, I don't know if you realize, but my brain works in pictures. So when you said you were naked in the mud, I, I got these really bad pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I got great pictures, man. It's like uh, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's epic, dude. Epic. Inspire. So, Rick, um, inspire us with one of your great images and tell us the story behind it. Well, you know, I, I think uh, for photographers, uh, their pictures are like their children. They like them. You know, my parents always, we had four kids. They treated us, everyone the same, exactly, all the time. So, you know, I think with our pictures, they're like children. We, we like them all. So I have so many, uh, I have so many favorite pictures. I was just in Kenya, in the Masai Mara. If, uh, if your listeners and viewers go on my website, ricksalmon.com, and go on my galleries, in my one week on the Mara, one week on the Mara, there's a picture we have of... Uh, of what's called a leopard, we call him the killing machine. We call wow. him the killing machine. He's looking. He's looking like right at the camera. You know, wow. a photography tip is, you know, when you're photographing an animal or photographing a person, if you see eye to eye and you shoot eye to eye, the person looking at the picture can relate more to the subject. So I'm getting down really low. I'm trying to see eye to eye, shoot eye to eye with this leopard, and he's looking all around. He's looking all, and then he looks. If you go on my site, you say it. He's looking like right at the camera. And we call them the killing machine. So this leopard's like 150 pounds or something like that or less. He would kill a wildebeest and drag it up to this tree and eat it in the tree. And he would do this three or four times a day. Wow. And the wildebeest weighs over 300 pounds. So oh, crazy. That's just incredible. One just one thing about my pictures there is, you know, my, they have my name on it. But I had so much help. I, the guide found it, right? The guide tracked it. My wife helped me switch lenses, and uh, we had my friend Jonathan Scott. I don't know if he's popular in Australia, but you ever have Big Cat Diaries down there? Yes. It's a TV show. Um, yes, I've heard of it. Yeah, I have. So anyway, yes. he was the host, so he loaned me his safari vehicle. So I actually only get a quarter of the credit, and I do give credit where credit's due. <laughs> uh, good. Awesome. Awesome. That's so tell, um, for those people that are actually listening to this on a podcast, can you explain a little bit more about the image? You know, uh, what lens did you shoot it with and what's in the background, that type of stuff? Right, right. Well, actually, you bring up a good point because the background can make or break a shot. So I shoot 
probably actually except for my HDR pictures and my flash pictures, I shoot everything on the aperture priority mode. So, <clears throat> because I, I really care how much the background is in focus or or out of focus. So I took that picture with the relatively new Canon 70 to 300 millimeter IS lens. Wow. This is one of the sharpest lenses that Canon makes. I also had the 100 to 200, you know, the new lens they have with the, actually, sorry, sorry, the 200 to 400 oh, with, yes. the, with the 2, 2x converter. But anyway, the 70 to 300 is so sharp. So the thing is, I'm shooting down low and I'm bracketing actually with the aperture to maybe put the background a little more in focus, a little out of focus. So I'm changing the aperture because you know there were a lot of twigs behind it. So I, I thought, well, I wanted to capture the feeling of Africa, but if I blew it out too much, it could look like we was taken at the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> right? Yeah, true. So, so by seeing, you know, when I actually, so when I take a picture, I take of an animal or a person. I take what's called the environmental portrait, like the portrait in the environment, then I go in for the, for the headshot. Like, in other words, if I were closer to the camera, uh, you know, just really close, you wouldn't know that I was in my, uh, my office here. So I think that's good advice when you're photographing a person or an animal. Uh, take the environmental portrait and take, uh, take the portrait. You tell the story because you don't know what you're going to like uh, afterward the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's a really good tip. And one thing that I love about it, I just love how he's just staring you down in that image, Rick. It's just just amazing. He feels like he's just going to jump out and grab you, you know? Like he's just, all that focus is just on the viewer. And he probably image. could jump out and grab you. He probably could. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, probably, he probably could, but you know what? I don't think it's ever happened. Yeah, you know, yeah, like right. the, we're in an open safari vehicle, right? And there's vehicles all over. You know, what's amazing is you go to, well, you were in South Africa, right? Yeah. Uh, you go in the round, you go around the vehicle, and they don't. The animals don't see you as food, yeah. right? You're in the vehicle; it smells like oil or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think anyone comes back from Africa uh, unchanged because you see the circle of life. Yeah. You okay. see the circle of life, and you might mm. be sorry when you see these lions kill like a ba baby giraffe or something. But then you see the cute cubs, which are also on that gallery. Uh, you, they have to eat. So watching that circle of life uh, is uh, very, very interesting. No, that's awesome. And Rick, I've, I've had the uh, uh, privilege of actually seeing two kills happening uh, in the Kruger National Park when I was younger growing up. And I think that's, you know, once in a lifetime uh, experience to actually see lions stalk something and kill mm -hmm. it. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, and, it's, and, and how they go like, you know, in, you know, in a unit there, right? And they're with the, their ears are, you know, as you know, black in the back. So they, when they're going through the grass, the other line, lines can see it. And that, that's actually another good point when I'm talking about that. Having a good guide, as you know, no matter where you go on the planet. I'm going to India in two weeks. We have a good guide set up. The, and mm. the guide is essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. totally. Yeah, good, um, good local knowledge. Oh, local that's, knowledge is, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big part of planning your trip for sure. Yeah, yeah. having that well, guide, you know, critical. Yeah. You know Wherever you go and do research on the web, like we're going to India where they have a lot of temples. So I'm not going to wear hiking boots there because every time I go into a temple, I have to take off my shoes. So I'm going to take slip-on, you know, slip-off shoes. Yeah. That's that, a great tip. That is a yeah. really, really great tip. And, and that's what you don't think about often when you're not a photographer is all the work and preparation that goes in before you even get there and take the image and while you're there. You know, little tips like that. That's amazing, Rick. Yeah, I can't agree more. Awesome. Yeah. Rick, can I just jump back to your uh, bracketing the aperture? I, I just wanted some technical information. So when, you, when you're shooting, um, you're obviously shooting wide open aperture, which is probably, is it a 2.8 or f4 on that uh, 70 to 300 lens? And then yeah, so I, I should, go ahead. And then are you bracketing to like mid aperture, like f8 or something? What do yeah. you do? I do that. Sure, we could change. We could make it a little blurrier in Photoshop, right? Or or light when we could blur the background. But I, I figure, what the hell? Because sometimes, sometimes, just if I'm shooting wide open, just having the eyes in focus is cool, and having the ears out of focus is cool. But yeah. having then the whole head in focus is cool. So, you know, but I don't do that in landscapes. In landscapes, I want every. I want it to look like it looks to my eyes. Like you guys are seeing me here. It's a wide-angle lens. Everything in the scene is in focus, yeah. right? If the background was a little out of focus, it might be annoying. Yeah. So in landscape photography, I strive, unless I'm shooting through something, I strive to get everything in the scene in focus. So I'm using a wide-angle lens, a small aperture, and focusing one-third into the scene. Right. And okay. believe it or not, a lot of people ask me, when I talk about that, what does uh, focusing one-third into the scene mean? So I ask, and I know you guys know the answer to this question, I ask, well, do you understand the spatial contingency and the curvilinear aspect of how the light bounces off the rear element of... 
Uh, no. <laughs> no. I had him. I had him. I'm like, huh? no. <laughs> uh, that's gold. <laughs> well, but they don't get the they don't get the one third into the scene. So my screen here, right? Yeah. So what I say is. So it's a wide angle lens, small aperture focus, one third into the scene. What I say is imagine a football field and you're at this end. So if you're in a football field, you're at this end, you focus like at the 33 yard line. That's one third into the scene. Now that sounds backward, right? If you're you know, out photographing on the Oregon coast or in Kruger National Park and you want to get that sweeping landscape, you think, well, he probably meant, you know, he was naked dancing at the mud at Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> he probably meant two thirds, he lost some brain cells. It's not two thirds. It's actually one third into the scene. That sets up the lens for the maximum, maximum depth of field. It doesn't mean everything's going to be in focus, but that'll give you the maximum. So what I do sometimes is I'll go back a little wider and then I'll crop in because the further away you are from the foreground element, the more you have in focus. Yeah. Awesome. That's that's great. Hyperfocal distance. Yeah. And that image is so inspiring, mate. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Well, awesome. well, you guys, you guys don't remember. Actually, you, you wouldn't remember because they took this off lenses before. I don't have, I have my, uh, my lenses over there. Uh, there they used to be a hyperfocal setting actually on the lens that you would turn the lens to get the maximum depth really? of field, yeah. but they, wow. they, they took this off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, funny. I don't, never, never understood why they got rid of that. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, anyway, yeah, awesome. it's all good. But luckily, we've got Rick to tell us to shoot one third in. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. Create. I'll talk about a daylight fill and flash, if I may. Yeah. And, you know, whole books have been written on daylight fill and flash. You know, DVDs have been written on, on flash photography. It's really not that hard. If you want to make, I could actually, I guarantee people when I give a, a seminar uh, or a workshop, and I give a lot of workshops, I say, I promise you, I don't make a lot of promises, I promise you, you'll master daylight fill and flash in seven minutes. Wow. And, and they do it. And here's what you do. You take your camera, you put it on the manual mode, and you dial in the right exposure for the existing lighting condition. So in here, you know, it's relatively dark compared to outside. So <clears throat> I might have to shoot at ISO 2000. So I say, put it at ISO 2000 and set your shutter speed not higher than a 200th of a second. Okay? So, so far, I'm only one minute into the whole thing, right? So... Set your camera on manual. Don't use a shutter speed higher than a two hundredth of a second, because without getting into high spin, high sync uh, flash, that's as uh, fast as most cameras sync. But anyway, you dial in the right manual exposure and turn on your flash. And you need a flash with the plus and minus setting, a variable output flash. Then you you take the shot. If the subject is too bright, then you dial down the flash because the flash is affecting the light on the subject and it's not affecting the background. So the advantage to using this quick technique is that you can control the light on the subject independently from the light around. If you want the background a little darker to make the subject stand out, you could use a higher, a, a smaller f-stop, right, to let in less light. You let in less light, the flash is going to, on ETTL or ITTL, it's still going to put out enough light to illuminate the subject. So daylight fill and flash, actually, if your listeners want to learn more, they just do a search Rick Salmon, a daylight fill and flash. I have about five articles out there. Perfect, well, that's mate. Awesome, that's that's awesome. And, what a yeah, tip. I use that all the time when I'm photographing portraits too. So basically what you're saying is you expose for the background and then right? you, you pop in enough flash to light up your subject. And if it's too bright, you dial down the flash. If it's too dark, I mean the subject's too dark, you dial up the flash. Wow. Right. And, and if you want the background lighter or darker, to play around with the aperture or the shutter speed. Yeah. You, could, you could use a slower shutter speed. It's relatively easy today. Awesome, Rick. Thank you That's very much great. for that. What and that, um, can you show us that really uh, you. That brand new uh, <laughs> Canon product that they're about yeah, to Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a new Canon out. Uh, I can't reveal how many pixels it is, but it has more. It, actually, I have it here. I'm going to show in a second. It has more uh, pixels than any other Canon camera out there, and it has a really cool uh, zoom lens. And it, but it's relatively lightweight and uh, and compact. <laughs> oh, the reason man. I wore my black shirt here is so you could uh, see this really cool uh, device. And actually, the lens it's it, the lens comes off. Look at this. So oh, you can like wow. put this. You know, it makes it easy to put in like a camera bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can oh. see why you'd want to have to take the lens off. That thing's huge. And, and, the, and the, tripod, <laughs> the tripod socket too. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so that looks like a 600 millimeter f4 lens, but is it actually a 6 millimeter f4 lens? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, they've changed to inches now. This is just the three inch LEDs. Oh, wow. three inch. <laughs> oh geez, that's about time we haven't changed it. Oh, inches. man, that's hilarious. I so want one. I'm getting one. Hey, hey, a quick tip about lenses. Can I give one more yeah, tip? Yeah, and this yeah, is yeah, actually, yeah. Awesome. It's actually a good tip. Cleaning, cleaning your lens is really important. A lot of people, and this isn't a joke, a lot of people just clean their lenses, you know, like that. And they're just moving the dust around. Yes. But if you're shooting like into the sun, uh, you want to get that sunburst effect, for example, and shooting it with a wide angle lens, a tiny speck of dust could look like a big blob in your picture and ruin the shot. So what you want to do is you want to start from the middle and wipe out like this. Ah, Otherwise, you're just moving yeah. this stuff all yeah. around. So it's a quick tip, but it's actually a, it's a, a good tip. That's great. Uh, that's I, awesome. Yeah. That's an awesome uh, tip. Do you want to see my lens cloth, Rick? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do uh, it. I know. We're terrible. Dodgy brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly fell over. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all over, buddy. I can yeah. get another coffee for you. Oh, that's awesome tip, Rick. Hey, um, I know you've got one, one more thing you wanted to announce here today, mate. What have you got for us, buddy? Uh, one more thing? What was that? I forget. Oh, you told me you had something you wanted to tell us about. Uh, something that you haven't released yet. Or something you haven't released release yet. Or was that the camera? <laughs> Uh, no, that, yeah, that was that was the camera. Well, uh, my photo sundial app, which actually works in Australia and South Africa, this is a pretty cool app. Uh, it tells you the uh, you know when the sun's going to rise, when it's going to set, has phases of the moon. It's on the uh, iTunes store. It's called Rick Salmon's Photo Sundial. Awesome, yeah. So right. it's uh, you know it's all about the light, and this uh, app will definitely help you find the best light. Yeah, I've actually checked that out, and it's awesome, guys. And here's the link to it now. It's a must to grab if you're if you're going to be out there, you know, shooting landscape or anything like that, and oh, even portrait, I suppose, Brent. You know, what sun direction and stuff like that. I'm yeah. Rick. I'm, I'm a landscape photographer, so all this portrait stuff is. You've just you've actually taught me something today because I have no but, idea but, about but stuff. <laughs> but you could use that daylight fill and flash when photographing flowers. That's true, macro. You know, yeah, it's for, macro for photographing yeah. flowers because the the goal with that is you don't want it to look like a flash picture. Yeah. So by balancing the light from the flash to the available light, it shouldn't look like a flash picture. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for being on today, Rick. It's been a pleasure having you, buddy. You've been yeah. awesome. It's an honor to have you on, and um, absolutely. And, and just thinking of you dancing naked in the mud at Woodstock is just, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's stupid. Love it, man. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. You're doing a great job. Keep spreading the word. It's uh it's, uh, it's really cool to be uh, with you. And, uh, you know, before you came on, we talked about maybe doing a project together. So when we get off here, let's continue that. And maybe some of your listeners can join us on this uh, secret adventure. Ooh, awesome, guys. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like fun. Definitely, yeah, guys. And, and just so that you guys know, we're going to put all the um, the links to Rick's products uh, in the show notes below. Yeah, check out the show notes. And, and there'll be a link there to Rick's site and everything he does. He's, he's amazing. He's got so much going on. I don't know how he has time to do anything else. But, uh yeah, awesome, mate. We appreciate you being on. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Man, I love Rick. He's the <laughs> godfather of photography. I can't believe I love that title. I'm getting a shirt. Rick <laughs> Salmon, the godfather. <laughs> he is awesome, dude. And that story about Woodstock. How would you believe it? Rick Salmon, legendary photographer at Woodstock, uh, naked with a combi van. It's, I just can't uh, imagine. And the images in my head. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know if I can take that. <laughs> no, but you've got to remember, he was probably 20 years old, so it's all good. He's probably yeah. fit and buffed. No, well, he is fit and buffed. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he is now, but yeah. yeah so like, anyway. Like me. Yeah, like you. Yeah, unlike me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're just talking earlier about uh, the killing machine and how that leopard can actually oh. pull a, an impala or... A Johnny or a wildebeest up yeah, a tree. Yeah, yeah, But we're just thinking there's no way it can pull Johnny up a tree. Well, unless there was two of them. You yeah, know, one's one pushing. The yeah, one's, one's pulling. One's pulling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny, mate. And that image, it's so inspiring. That that leopard is just looking oh. straight down the barrel of the camera at him. Mm. And every time I look at that image, it just hairs in the back oh, of my neck, me mate. Me too. Actually, yeah. when he was talking about the hair oh, in the back of my neck. I'm doing it now. That's yeah, just yeah. amazing. Look, so I've inspiring. experienced that, guys, first day. Not a leopard, but I've, I've had a lion look at me straight in the eyes. And the lion's got those yellow eyes. Oh, yeah. And it's just, there's no emotion in those eyes. And it's bloody scary. I mean, that's oh. that's that's the only way to, to explain oh, it. It's, oh, it's scary. When something looks at you and it's got eye contact, oh, and you know... It could take you down. in Africa, I don't know if you guys realize, but in Africa, humans are about four or five down on the food chain. So there's about three or four species that actively yeah. will hunt humans for food. So when wow. you're there, you, you're not the top of the food chain anymore. That's you, unbelievable. You're a couple down. And, and when something's looking at you and it's thinking, I want to consume you, <laughs> 
It's <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's crazy, bro. That is so crazy. And uh, that tip about the field flash, man. I like. I'm a landscape photographer, and yeah, just those tips he gave was yeah. just awesome, mate. It's killer. And killer. the way he explained it, it's so easy. Yeah. You know, you can know. expose for the background. Yeah. Two hundredth of a second because that's the the sync speed of most flashes. Yeah. They can't go much faster than that unless yeah. you go around high high speed sync. Yeah. And uh, and then just you know either cranking it up or cranking it down whether yeah. the person's too bright or not bright enough. I mean, mm. that's so easy. And, yeah. and that's a great it's amazing. Tip. Yeah. yeah, awesome. He's the legendary. You can see why he's the godfather, yeah. man. Yeah, totally. You'd have a look at his website. And I just got an email. <laughs> and you have a look at his website <laughs> and the diverse range of images in his galleries. I and, know. and to think all those images, it was Kenya, wasn't it? That Kenya album we had a look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, all those images he shot in one Mara, week. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. amazing. Like awesome um, environmental portraits yeah. and, and, you know, cultural shots and, and landscapes and yeah. wildlife. It's oh. just. He just encapsulates it all. I it's know. just, oh, mate, he's a legend. He is. I Absolute mean, he does everything. Legend. You know, model, photography, landscapes. Yeah, you know, I know. Like, everything. And he's written how many books? 30-something books? Yeah, yeah. And I he's know. got all these apps out there. He's got great. apps. And by the way, mention the apps. I've got his Sundial app, and it's amazing to get the light direction and the moon phases. And, guys, if you haven't got it, here's the URL to that now. Go and pick that up because it's it's awesome. And, and you're supporting an awesome guy. Rick's, yeah. Rick's awesome. I guy. wish I had that app because a couple of years ago, I actually went and photographed the sunrise. And I went to this great place with these rocks that are up here, in, mm. close to us in Bad Harbour. Yeah. And I, I got there at the right time, about you know, 20 minutes before sunrise. I set everything up on my tripod and I was waiting, waiting. I'm like, geez, the sun's never rising. And I looked and I'm like, oh, man, I must be wrong. <laughs> I got the wrong angle. The sun was actually uh, yeah. over here and I thought it was there. Yeah. And I should have had that app. Yeah, but, portrait uh, photographer. Yeah. It's all right. He <laughs> should have had me with him. <laughs> Oh, it's all good, bro. And uh, how about that little mini camera? It's, he's hilarious, I love it, mate. The, that the six can, millimeter. The six millimeter Canon DSLR. I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> he's got a wicked sense of humor. Oh, oh man. And, but I like the tip of actually starting in the middle uh, yeah. and moving things out. Perfect, perfect. But bro. he has a tip, guys. T-shirt. I know he doesn't believe in it, but yeah. I mean, I use my T-shirt all the time. But, Pure cotton. That's yeah, and I mean, I've got a UV filter on mine anyway. So realistically, I'm only cleaning the UV filter. I'm not actually on the lens element. So yeah, I mean, but I have. I, I mean, I clean straight onto the lens. Yeah, and the glass is fine. I yeah. mean, it can handle it. Yeah, he cleans sand off his lens with his t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, story. Yeah. true story. True <laughs> story. You do. I've seen you. I blow it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, man. Anyway, guys, that was another epic show. We hope you enjoyed it. And please, as always, leave us some comments on iTunes and a rating. We'd love to get that feedback and it really helps the ranking of the show. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you've got anyone you want us to interview or any feedback about this show, please leave it in the comments on the blog. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Leave comments below. Have an awesome day. Take care and have a great day. To find out more, go to shareinspirecreate.com.